Hi, I'm Phil Constantine. On this episode of Travels with Phil, we're going to Wilson's Creek National Battlefield in Missouri. Missouri was the scene of many conflicts before and during the American Civil War. As with most things regarding the American Civil War, there are lots of details, subtexts, disagreements, and differences of opinions. Too much to cover in a short video like this. I'll try to cover just some of the highlights. Officially, Missouri had tried to remain neutral in the conflicts between the North and South leading up to the Civil War. This includes the famous Missouri Compromise, which limited which new states would allow slavery or make it illegal. In Missouri, different groups, though, were quite active in supporting both sides of the issues. Nathaniel Lyon was made commander of the U.S. Army Arsenal at St. Louis, one of the largest in the country, in fact, maybe the fourth largest during this time period. Southern sympathizers, led by Missouri Governor Claiborne Jackson, were planning on seizing the arms prior to seceding from the Union. Lyon was strongly anti-slavery, and he was quoted as saying, it is no longer useful to appeal to reason, but to the sword. Lyon arrested those involved in the plan in May 1861. Other sympathizers marched on the location. Lyon had his soldiers open fire on the crowd, killing 28. Later that month, Lyon was promoted to Brigadier General and given command of U.S. troops in Missouri. Governor Jackson fled St. Louis and quickly helped gather a force of around 12,000 Southern sympathizers, mostly volunteers. The Missouri legislature removed Governor Jackson from his position. Brigadier General Benjamin Culloch took over command of the rebel forces. Lyon was in command of around 5,000 men. Skirmishes between elements of both groups continued for a few weeks eventually leading to a full-scale battle on August 10, 1861 along Wilson's Creek in southwestern Missouri. And that's the focus of this video. Wilson Creek was the second major battle of the Civil War, even though a lot of people haven't heard it, came after the first Battle of Bull Run Manassas. And as you can see here, mostly a rural area even today. These uh, maps here, they show a somewhat contemporary Civil War map and then the map that comes with the brochure when you go there. And these charts here show you who was involved, the dates were involved, the United States and Confederate groups out here. 1,300 casualties on the U.S. side, 1,232 on the Confederate side, and it is sometimes called the Battle of Oak Hills and even Springfield. Now this is a drawing that, or a painting actually, a sketching that shows some of the activity at the scene. So let's look at some of the commanders here. On the U.S. side, Brigadier General Nathan Lyon, Colonel Franz Siegel, or Seigel, I'm not very good at pronouncing names, and Major Samuel Sturgis. And coming over to the Confederate side, that's an actual flag there from the battle. And the commanders were Major General Sterling Price, Brigadier General Ben McCulloch, and Brigadier General Nicholas Bartlett Pierce. And those were the three leaders for the Confederate side. Let's take a look outside. Devils with Phil continues. It's Thursday. And we are looking at the 100th anniversary of the National Park System here at Wilson's Creek National Battlefield. This is the second uh, major battle of the Civil War, 19, 1861, I should say. It's in Missouri, not too far south from Springfield. They have a very nice uh, museum here. Could take a quick walk through it. Some of the uh, discusses some of the issues here in Missouri. The, what was originally called the Missouri Compromise, where they were trying to find. Uh, slave states and non-slave states. Some people weren't satisfied with the quote-unquote compromise, which is quite often the case. So you see some of the activities that went on here. This is Wilson's Creek right here. That's Springfield. Carthage was there not too long ago. Boonville, Jefferson City, St. Louis, Fort Leavenworth. This is a flag that flew. A Confederate. Lots and lots of examples of firearms, Some, many of them used at the field. This is a very nice interactive display here that shows who moved, who moved where, what positions they took from both sides. General Lyons, uh, Nathaniel Lyons was the first Union general to die in the Civil War, according to their uh, program here. These are some of the battles in what was called the Trans-Mississippi, the area uh, west of the Mississippi. A lot of activity up here in Missouri, Arkansas, a little bit in the upper corners there of Oklahoma. Texas had a couple of uh, battles, uh, Sapine Pass over here, Galveston. I want to say that that's where Stan Wadey was, but I'm not sure. 
Arizona, New Mexico, where Tone Pass, I think, is, was one of them. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I know there's some there. Lots of different uh, documentations here for the various uh, battles in the area. This is what a regular soldier's life could look like. This was a rank uh, officer. We're talking about some of the people involved, Bloody Bill Anderson. Uh, there was a lot of uh, raiding going on in Missouri. Maddox, William Quantrill, well known as the uh, raiders in the South. More uh, examples and material from uh, various battles like P. Rich, was there yesterday. Different handguns, uniforms. Bugles, personal materials. This is some of the medicine. Medicine uh, supposedly increased, got better during the Civil War. And that's quite often that's where the real need for uh, increased medicine comes from is the fighting and that's what happened. So a very nice uh, inside museum here at Wilson's Creek National Battlefield in uh, just south of Springfield, Missouri. Travels with Phil continue. Let's go outside and look at a few spots out on the battlefield. This is the actual Wilson's Creek that this is named after. Our first spot here is going to be the Confederates General Price's headquarters area. You can see it on the map there. Southern forces had been camped here for roughly three days, and they had planned a surprise attack for the 10th, but postponed it due to rain. However, the Union forces did carry out attack on the 10th and did surprise Confederates. You can see somebody warning up there in that drawing up on the top part. So let's move over to the Ray House and the Spring House. The Ray House, it's the only surviving structure from the war, the Civil War. And you can see over in the left-hand corner here, that's the Spring House. Travels with Phil continues at Wilson Creek, a national uh, battlefield. This is a Spring House that I believe is in the Ray House off of uh, the main road here. They uh, stoned this up here so they could protect the spring, come down here and get water. They could also use this as a place to uh, store their... Uh, um, eggs and dairy kind of products like that. It kept it a little bit cooler than the rest of it. There's a fine critter down there walking around. It is a little bit cooler than the surrounding area in here. Uh, now this all became actively involved in the uh, battle that took place here in 1861. Actually used some of the water from here to uh, help uh, the injured, the uh, the doctors uh, use part of the house uh, to uh, do surgeries and uh, deal with the wounded people. Our next stop will be at an area known for Siegel's Attack. You can see it here on the map. As part of General Lyon's plan to attack from two different directions, Colonel Siegel's forces attacked the Confederates from the south, and it was across this area that is now a cornfield. For a while, Colonel Siegel's forces made significant advances, but unfortunately for them, it did not last. Our next stop is going to be at an area called Bloody Hill. The most decisive fighting of the battle took place in this area. Lots of fatalities and casualties there took place here as well. While Union forces initially advanced, the Confederates had more men and ammunition. You can see it's a large area and it's not a major rise, but it's enough. And it was here General Lyon became the first U.S. general to die in the war. He died about 9.30 in the morning. Despite having better positions at time, the U.S. forces could not hold out against the Confederates' superior numbers. Eventually, U.S. forces had to retreat, leaving the Confederates in charge of the field. Bloody Hill is where the fighting started and later ended. Again, this was the second uh, major battle in the uh, Civil War. And uh, just before Pea Ridge, in fact, some of the participants here went on into a fight at Pea Ridge in Arkansas as well. Travels with Phil from the Wilson Creek National Battlefield. And just this one on final note, there's a lot to see and learn at Wilson's Creek National Battlefield. Just be careful where you park. You never know whose sights you'll be in. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please feel free to make comments below as long as the language is family friendly. And if you like this video, please click on the thumbs up button below.
You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the circle with my picture in it in the lower right hand corner of the video. The arrow is pointing at it now. And once you have subscribed, you can be notified of when I have a new video posted by clicking on the bell icon in the description field below the video. Thanks again for watching.